Hello, this is Dr. Rutledge, and uh, I've been invited to talk for about 15 minutes about when it is appropriate or reasonable to consider mini gastric bypass for different kinds of patients. And uh, since it's a short little presentation, I'll go through that and I'm gonna switch the screen over right now. Okay, <clears throat> so now we're screening, we are say, or sharing the screen. And let me show my mouse, <clears throat> visible. Good, a few fine points, um, ideal candidates for the MGB. And I can tell you the end of the presentation now, which is everyone is a good candidate for MGB, but not every surgeon is a good MGB surgeon. And uh, so it might be a little controversy there. Um, reminders, uh, MGB is simple, elegant, um, effective, durable. We now have over 20 year data. And as I'll emphasize later, you can talk to 20 year MGB patients on Facebook today. That is to say between 10 and 20 year MGB patients are available for you to talk with who I've operated on more than 10, 15 or up to 23 years after their MGB on Facebook today, you can talk to them and ask them if they have problems or how they're doing. The MGB is very powerful, but also uniquely can be tailored to the patient as we'll talk about today. It's reversible and revisable, and we find a large number of surgeons are unaware of this or they do it poorly. And uh, it is revisable in addition to being specifically reversible. So again, let me emphasize that uh, you don't need to listen to me. Obviously I'm biased about the MGB as you'll see, but for example, you have a unique opportunity. You can talk to literally thousands of my patients, patients who are 10, 15, or 20 years after their surgery on Facebook today. That is thousands of my personal cases. You can talk directly and ask them how their MGB is. Similarly, you can talk to sleeve patients. You can talk to Roux and Y patients. And the number of tragedies that you can run into there, I think personally is overwhelming but I invite you to confirm some of the things I say by talking directly to my patients and not uh, necessarily taking my word for it. Again, more than 5,000 of my patients, MGB patients, not just of mine, but around the world, from Australia to Kazakhstan, from Africa to Europe, to the United States and Canada. There are thousands of MGB patients online today, go ask them how they're doing. And then my suggestion is to go and talk to sleeve patients. Just as a, an aside, I recently talked to a friend of mine in Dubai and she says her highest rate of cases that she does per day is now sleeve failures. So um, you don't need to go back very far to find out the failures of lap bands and sleeves. And we ask that you consider talking to my patients about their 10 to 20 year weight loss whether or not you find any patients of mine who have low protein, ask them about bile reflux and other problems. And I think you'll find the MGB in well-trained hands is quite a good operation. And so this is the paradox which I wanna focus on because I only have 15 minutes, I can just barely touch on some of these topics. But what you can see now in hundreds of patients and the and hundreds of publications um, on the MGB that is increasing at an exponential rate in PubMed is superb results in the hands of some surgeons. On the other hand, complications, reflux, gastritis, bile, malnutrition, diarrhea, ulcers, and death are in the hands of, well, dare I say it, surgeons not trained by me. So my bias is that uh, there is a paradox. There are surgeons who are worried, frightened, have had complications. Most of them who I have seen report this have not had education or training with me. <clears throat> Again, let's give an example. Well-trained surgeons reporting thousands of patients, Kular, Mario Musella, and many others are examples. Complications, reflux, gastritis, malnutrition, diarrhea, death, in hands, and uh, just as an example, think of the Y Omega trial. Again, because time is limited, I don't have the opportunity to go through all of these, but there is quite a paradox that you can see in the literature. Again, just a reminder, 
The MGB is an operative procedure which frequently shows misunderstanding and mismanagement by surgeons. And because the surgeons and, and nutritionists don't understand it, even now, 20 years later, there's widespread misunderstanding and harm because of lack of knowledge. Standard general surgery is all that it is, antrectomy, gastrogegenostomy, and a collis gastroplasty. It's not an obstructive. It's not a sleeve. It doesn't need a band. It doesn't need a tight pouch. It doesn't need an obstruction. And the anticholic bill raw too is tailored to the patient. Again, these are simple components. And when people violate them, they often end up with complications and problems. And that's bearing on our topic today. So what, are, what patients are ideal candidates for the MGB? Well, in short, the MGB is good for everyone. The usual bariatric patient with or without diabetes, the super obese and the super super obese, patients with GERD, and that's widely misunderstood, difficult patients who might have psychiatric or other problems because it's reversible and revisable. It's good for children because again, if they do show any problems with the operation, it's reversible within 20 minutes. It's good in the elderly because it can be tailored and be less powerful. It allows patients like the elderly to eat a more normal diet, and it interferes with eating the pathologic foods like sugars and fats. It's good for alcoholics because alcoholics, if they violate the principle of abstinence post-op, that allows us to reverse it as long as we educate the family and the patient that should they have inability to control their alcohol intake, we can reverse it quickly. It's also good in borderline patients, psychiatric patients, prouder willy patients, as it's been shown in publications, because again, in cases where it's not successful, it is revisable in less time than it takes to get a haircut. In the future, we see that it's useful in non-obese diabetics, non-obese metabolic syndrome, non-obese hypertension, arteriosclerotic cardiovascular disease, peripheral vascular disease, liver disease, such as NASH, cerebrovascular disease, renal disease, and more. So all can be good patients. The issue is the quality of the surgeon, the skill of the surgeon, and the preparation of the patients. I'll take a moment and remind you of the history of the MGB. Basically, I was a trauma surgeon for 20 years, and now 23 years, I've been an MGB surgeon. In 1997, an illegal drug dealer was shot six times in the abdomen at nine o'clock at night in September 1907, 1997. Uh, I took him to the operating room and found bullet wounds to the stomach and the tail of the pancreas and multiple loops of small bowel. So with these injuries, I did a distal gastrectomy, a distal pancreatectomy and splenectomy, repaired numerous loops of small bowel. And I reconstructed him with what is now known as the mini gastric bypass. At the time, of course, it's a Vilroth II gastrogegenostomy after an antrectomy. 20 years later, still, surgeons still can't figure this out. Somehow they still think it's some kind of unusual operation when it's done routinely and has been done routinely for 140 years. The MGB is not a ruin why with one less anastomosis. And when people misunderstand this, they harm patients. The Bill Roth II is a good operation. General surgeons know this and they use the Bill Roth II every day. Many bariatric surgeons are uninformed and they fear the Bill Roth II. Apropos this discussion, this demonstrates the misunderstanding. So uninformed, fear the Bill Roth II, an uninformed and untrained surgeon should not do the MGB under any circumstances for any patient. That's as simple as that. Without the adequate training and understanding of the operation, don't do any MGBs, period. You're not the surgeon. We see this all the time. We see the short pouch. We see misunderstandings about how simple, elegant, effective the operation is. And so here briefly, let's remind you of the operation. Four ports, five ports, dissection of the lesser curvature, stapling in a right angle to the side, staying wide from the um, port and uh, from the uh, bougie. We stay away from the EG junction and we make a cobra head at the tip and again, we see widespread misunderstanding of this approach, gastrotomy, enterotomy, gastrogegenostomy, and surgery is done often in 20 to 40 minutes, and patients can frequently go home the same day. We see this misunderstanding every day. Well-informed general surgeons, as I say, routinely use the Bill Roth II. Uninformed bariatric surgeons, apropos our discussion today, fear the Bill Roth II and misunderstand it. Some of the key components that are widely misunderstood is that the pouch is not a sleeve, it's not a 
flat band, it's not a Roux and Y pouch, it's a collis gastroplasty. That's a non-obstructive gastric tube, it's not a sleeve or a Roux and Y. And this can lead to problems post-op and misunderstanding. Antrectomy in Burwell 2 is non-obstructive gastrojejunostomy, and we see this violated routinely. And it's not a short, not the short Roux and Y and not the long BPD, not the long BPD. So knowledge equals technique. If you don't understand the mechanism of action and the anatomy, then what you we find is you don't know how to do the surgery and then you harm patients. So the MGB is not an old mason loop. The MGB is not like the Roux and Y or the sleeve. The MGB is not primarily malabsorptive, widespread misunderstanding. You'll see confused surgeons say this all the time and it's very disappointing and misleading. The MGB is not like the jejunal ileal bypass. It's not a massive gut bypass. We see misunderstanding of the mechanism of the act, uh, action of the MGB. It is restriction without obstruction. It's a post gastrectomy syndrome, which you can look up and we've known about for almost a hundred years. It is good dumping versus bad dumping and it's not a band or a sleeve. The MGB is easy if you know what you're doing. It is a disaster and deadly in the wrong hands and we've seen that, for example. All the details for doing a good MGB, if you don't understand the mechanism of action and the anatomy that is knowledge, then you will not know how to do the operation technique. MGB surgical technique, we've gone over and obviously I can't teach all of these things in this 15 minute presentation. But again, what we tried to do is give you some background. We have thousands of my patients that are 10 to 20 years out. You can talk directly with them, see if they are having trouble. The new MGB is available for all kinds of patients. And those people who don't understand it should not use it. Nutritionists need to learn how to use it. And so what we say is check out Dr. Rutledge's results. And I was happy to be here today. I'm sorry that I can't be there in person I understand Dr. Kular will do a yeoman's job of trying to be more polite than I have been in my presentation, but I hope you'll wish me well as I return to my home in America. Thank you all very much.